all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of y'all. There are questions to be asked. Will there be answers to be questioned? seem to utilize his height that much as he starts as a punch as he bends in so I don't think that the height is going to be that big of a factor. Vargas in the past has been known both to back up and counter punch and to lead he can do either probably his best single weapon an excellent left hook to the body. On the other hand when he gets fighters against the ropes his tendency to square up and go shoulder to shoulder with them allows opportunities for the opponent. That's correct. Good stiff jab by Vargas. Jabbing to the body there. Javal with his own jab to the body. Fight begins at a relatively slow pace. There's the left hook to the body that is Vargas' best weapon. That exchange, you can really see the difference in the hand speed and the natural coordination that Vargas has over Joval. He's so much more better coordinated. One punch at a time so far for both guys. Nobody's really landed a credible combination. So Joval is putting a lot of pressure on Vargas. In what way? It's the foot pressure. I'm surprised that he's that, that is, is fast with his feet, and that's the big difference. He's a lot of pressure on him. Joval going to the body and trying to come back upstairs with the right hand. Vargas is visibly trying to control what he does. Box, box, take opportunities when they present themselves. And he landed two solid jabs moving to his left. Now goes back to the right. Well, when Vargas talks about being more elusive and smarter in the ring, he's really trying to reinstitute a style he thinks he had before he got too punch happy when he fought guys like Trinidad and De La Hoya. Do you agree that he once had that style? Well, I didn't see. Yeah, he had certain fights. I thought his best was with I Quarte, but I mean, he had no choice because Quarte is one of those physically strong guys, holds his hands up, and he was a strong man over a young boy. So he boxed and fought a very technical fight. But, but, but beyond that, he's for the most part been an aggressive type fighter. And that too, of course, is an element in his two-way romance with boxing fans. Ah, no question, no question. The first round that Vargas wanted. Watch, all he want to do is throw that right hand and left hook, all right? And on the inside, watch those up because he's throwing, all right? So when you grab him, turn him, push off, and keep walking left, all right? When you get jab up, snap the jab up. You're pushing it out there. What do you do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't push it, snap it. And don't sit in front of this man. Put right? that punches together. You remember what you're working on? Don't, you got to let your hands go. Yeah. Throw combinations. Stay low. Stay low and keep pumping that jab. Double it up. Because he's trying to hit you with his right hand. Give me that speed back there, Brian. Javal's trainer is Tracy Harris Patterson, the adopted son of former heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson, who himself won a world title at 130 pounds and had two great fights with uh, Arturo Gatti. And at 122. And incidentally, one of the judges uh, here tonight, Jesse Benvenides, once fought Patterson. 
Jesse Benavides was managed by no less a first than Emmanuel Stewart. There's an excellent left hook in there by Fernando Vargas as he landed his first really good combination of the fight, a straight right hand followed by a left hook. Emmanuel, did you know that your former fighter, Jesse Benavides, was becoming a uh, judge? Yeah, I talked to him today as I was on the way here. I was very proud of the fact that not only is he judging, he's judging this fight. This is his first major fight, I think, he's fighting like judging. And I'm, I'm surprised that uh, Javal, I, you know, I, I know that he's a tough fighter, but he's fighting a much better fight than I expected by making Vargas fight at a much faster tempo. Even though he hasn't landed any effective punch, he's really making Vargas work a lot more. Vargas with a hard right hand to the body. Joe Valls with a left hook to the body and a right hand in there, too, as he fires upstairs. Vargas tries to back him off with an uppercut. Javal keeps coming at him and continues, as you pointed out in round one, Emmanuel, to put foot pressure on Fernando Vargas. And, and Vargas, unless he knocks his boy out or gets some respect, he's going to have a rough night. He's going to have to do something to hurt him and, pretty, and have to do it pretty soon because the guy is coming in with no respect for him now and his confidence is growing. Does that mean that Vargas can't play it as close to the vest as he's been yes, playing it that's here? right. He, but he really isn't boxing the way he should anyway. He, he's just backing back a lot. But I think he's going to resort to his old style pretty soon, but he's going to have to do something to get some respect. Vargas uppercut and over the top of the right hand, landed accurately, not a lot of pop. Joval hasn't hit Vargas with anything big no. in these first two rounds, but he's staying at him, staying on him. Through 69 punches in the first round, only 31 for Vargas by CompuBaka count. So Javal, by far the more active fighter, he's creating the fight, and Vargas is having to respond to what he does. And I like what Vargas is doing now. He's making Joval back up, which is what he should do. Excellent jab by yeah. Vargas. <laughs> Vargas is defending well, blocking shot, and I think he just got Javal's respect yes. with that left hook. Yeah, Javal is not the type of fighter that fights back. Anyway. Well, after 15 months away with a bad back, Fernando Vargas just announced his return with a vicious left hook that wobbled Raymond Jobal. And I think that Jobal is going to be a, a, a volume for that punch a lot more, but he's going to have to make him back up some. I like the way Vargas is holding his chin into his chest and his right hand up by his jaw. He is defending, no question about it. The premiere of AB HBO Sports' latest documentary, Perfect Upset, the 1985 Villanova Georgetown NCAA championship game. Tune in for a chance to relive Villanova's shocking defeat of Patrick Ewing's Georgetown Hoyas. That's the Stop pulling back. Step around him. But don't pull back. Give this man angles, man. You gotta give him angles, okay, Rick? You gotta go back. Here you see Vargas landing a beautiful short left hook. In fact, very similar to the left hook that he was hit with in the first round when he fought Felix Trinidad. Or to the left hook with which he ultimately decked Trinidad <laughs> in the fourth round of that fight. It's the kind of left hook where you have your right hand on the side of your head and the left hook goes on the inside of the glove and still catches you. Jab by Vargas coming out of that exchange in the second round by copy box numbers. Vargas 17 out of 31 power shots. 55%. Fernando becoming very efficient with his work in round two. Now he tries to lean away, duck and slip as Javal tries to hammer him against the ropes. Vargas is looking to do more damage with one or two punches than Javal is able to do with the six or eight that he might throw in return. Yeah, and you can see Javal's punches coming. You know, he's not that really pinpoint with his punches. You can kind of see him just a little slight uh, chop when he throws his right hand, and that's how Vargas is getting away with it while he's fresh. He's been able to avoid it, but as he gets tired, he may have problems judging the distance of the punch that's coming. Joval has been known in some occasions to throw as many as 100 punches around. And 100 punches around is very good if you're sharp, if you're quick, if the punches are coming in combination and the opponent is continuously confused by them. But 100 lazy punches can get you knocked out. Yes, he can. But it is, he has to have a good work ethic because he's not a real accurate puncher. Jamal hit Vargas with a big right hand coming off of a left that Vargas dug to his body. 
Vargas may already have tasted the maximum Joe Val power at this point in the fight, and if so, Joe Val is going to have trouble hurting him. Yeah, he certainly can distract him. The most effective punch seemingly from both of them it has been a left jab tonight. They've both been able to land effective with jabs, but outside of the left hooks landed by Vargas, very few big power punches have been landed. on a straight right hand lead. He does it again, just a little bit short. Excellent uppercut. Left hook landed too. Javal comes back with two straight hard right hands of his own and bangs Vargas to the body. Vargas digging a hard right uppercut to the body. Now goes back to the left side of Joe Val's rib cage, and Val comes over the top of the right hand. They're trading punches in there. Round three has been fought at a pretty intense pace. Yeah, in fact, I don't recall the referee actually having any punches to break up so far in this fight. Vargas focusing on hiding his chin. Yeah, well, he can see the punches coming at this stage, but you know the guy keeps throwing punches all night. He plays the numbers game. So the later something they get through. Vargas still landing Five. the harder blows. Touch your temples, all right? When you're throwing that left hand, I want that right hand on your temple, all right? I do not want you pulling out with your hands low. Now here you see Vargas landing very effective with his left jab right between the gloves. And notice where his chin is, Emmanuel. His chin is tucked in. Vargas is fighting China. It looks like he's fighting like Mayweather. <laughs> and, and, he's, and he also appears to be at, at a better angle toward his opponent. Yeah, he usually fights square. He's square with his face, you know, bent down. But he's you're putting a little bit more angle into his style of this fight. Power shots in round three. CompuBox counted Vargas landing 12 out of 24. Javal, 13 out of 60. So Javal is throwing many more punches. Vargas trying to be more economical, more selective, and smarter through all three minutes of every round. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, two rounds to one, 29, 28, Fernando Vargas. Jim, rounds one and two, I thought there's no question Fernando did more damage. I mean, he sent him reeling in the second round. But in round three, Raymond Joval absolutely outworked him. I mean, no question, he just stayed on top of Fernando, landed more shots, landed more power shots. You had to give round three to Joval, 2-1, Vargas. Vargas has landed the more effective punches so far here in the fourth. Now Joe Ball pins him against the ropes and tries to get in some volume punching. Joe Ball is not a good puncher. But everything but, that Joe Ball does is volume. But if he can stay in here and put pressure on Vargas, he might test Vargas's stamina after having been away from the ring for such a long time. Well, he definitely is putting pressure on him, that's for sure. But here in the fourth round, Vargas seems to have found a good counterpunching groove, and he is not getting caught by any of Javal's shots, while occasionally, selectively, landing the ones he wants. Javal seems to be open for shots up through the middle. If, if Vargas would shoot probably right uppercuts and left uppercuts, he'd probably be more effective than trying to shoot punches over the top. How about the jab or the straight right hand lead? Well, the jab has been working effective all night. That's one thing I noticed he's moving like a boxer, but outside of that, an occasional jab, he's not actually boxing. The most important punch in boxing is the left jab, and it really amazes me how guys have abandoned it, and they make everything so much more difficult. Now that punch moves Joval even though it didn't land square. You can say this, he didn't 
He didn't kick a walkover for his return bout, Vargas. No, I mean, but he, he did kick a guy who may not be on his level or his, the level he was once on. And he may have picked a guy who's beatable, but certainly not a guy who's going to fall down the next time he gets hit squarely. No, he's definitely got a good test. But Joval, from what I saw in the previous fight, has never fought with this intensity and speed himself. He's normally much slower than this. Well, Jabal's never been on HBO, never been on Boxing After Dark. It's an opportunity for him. He probably thinks, hey, Vargas will have so much reading left, I'm going to score a big upset here and make a name for myself at age 36. Another good round for Vargas. Outstanding. I need you to box. And here's a look uh, at Brandy Moses, who owns a body bar shop right here in Corpus Christi. She is one of those small business owners that Texas politicians are working so hard to protect and uh, does this part time. Ten punches by CompuBox count. Landed 16. So Vargas lands more while throwing less than half as many punches in the fourth round. And that's what I meant when I said that he was into a very good counter-punching groove, selecting the opportunities he liked. Hey, you look at that slow arcing right hand come over the top, and you get a clear picture of what Emmanuel Stewart's talking about when he says that Vargas can see Joe Ball's punches coming. If Jovan would shoot his straight right hand and quit trying to throw it and chop it, just squeeze it tight and twist it straight through, Vargas would, have a, Vargas would have a real tough problem. And even if I was in Vargas's country corner and I see he's winning, I would still be a little bit worried because of the pace and the tempo that Jovan is setting. Vargas, for his part, seems very satisfied in there with his technical capabilities so far his ability to find Joval with the counter punches he likes. Fernando looking relaxed and comfortable as they work their way through the fifth. Fight scheduled for 10 rounds. Funny enough, a much tougher opponent than Fitz Vanderpool, the fighter against whom we last saw Vargas on HBO in the Olympic Auditorium a long time ago, two and a half years. Well, for a guy that's supposed to be just an opponent, Javal is fighting with a lot more confidence, a lot more determination and enthusiasm than I've saw in a long time than a supposed opponent guy. As Harold was saying earlier, that even though Javad may not land nothing out effectively, he could pop the win. Hard left hook by Vargas. Javad keeps coming. Yeah. Good body shot by Vargas, and now he stuns Javad with a left hook upstairs, landing accurately again. Javad holding on to Fernando's left hand, so he hits him with the right. You know what, even though Vargas is a much better, more active puncher, Javad never lost his rhythm his momentum. He's continually to step, making Vargas fight continually though. And he mm -hmm. hits Vargas with a couple of chopping right hands. But Vargas easily sustains those punches. Javad just doesn't have a lot of power. Good hard right hand body shot by Vargas. But for the first time in the fight, I see Vargas look like he's starting to give a little bit. Could be tired. Could be tired, and that's a round that could very easily go to Javal. Not on my card. <laughs> well, Vargas had a good good spot right there, but after that, you know, he didn't do that much. Head down, head down. Oh, right down. Don't give him water yet. Thank you. I don't want to fight, man. Don't hey, want to that's fight. it, man. If you're getting in there, you're punching. You got to stay low, Ray. Don't pull back up, all right? Don't pull back up. Just let your hands go. Keep stepping to the side. Rip them shots. If you're ripping that uppercut, come back with that left hook. You're down shit. Huh? You trade? Here we go. Look, we don't need to be trading in the clinches like that with your hands down at all. Get what you're going to get and get out low. Do not be standing in that trade. You're catching from the outside. Touch, touch, touch. Find the right hand. Weave over to the right side. 
Jovao by CompuBox count threw 110 punches in the fourth round, probably didn't win the round. So he came back out and threw 120 punches in the fifth round. Vargas threw only 43, again, landed more than half. Fernando Vargas giving credit by CompuBox, 22 out of 43. Now we go to round six of the scheduled 10. Vargas doubling with the left hand there, hook upstairs, hook to the rib cage. To keep in mind, Joe Val came into the ring tonight weighing 175, I believe, the light heavyweight limit, the biggest man that Vargas has ever fought, and Vargas was never a lights-out puncher, even in the junior middleweight division. All of which tells us we're probably headed toward a 10-round fight and a decision. Sure looks like that. Situation, but he was just his protecting rhythm. his chin. He can't get his rhythm. As soon as he backs out for a minute, Joe Val comes right back at him and continually is putting pressure on him. And is becoming, a, even though he's not landing any clean punches, he's still very effective. And Lawrence Cole is going to rule that Vargas was standing on Joe Val's foot. And as a result, it is not ruled a knockdown. Vargas digs a left hook into Joe Val's body. Joe Val's back foot slips one more time. He points to the canvas. Vargas comes back to try to land one more big shot. I'm anxious to see the replay on that. I thought it was a knockdown. Could have been wrong. Well, it didn't look like a big shot, and it was a body punch, so it, it would have been a little surprising. Yeah, but Jim, if he didn't get hit with that body punch, would he have gone down? I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I think not. There's some slippage with the shoes of Joval. It's, it's some kind of way. Marcus takes punch. advantage to hit Joval with a straight right hand. And he's designed to shorten the fight, but the bell rings and ends the round. Well, I don't know what the problem is with Joval's shoes, but that's his problem. It's not Marcus's yeah. problem. Take a deep breath and relax. Come on. Keep your heart rate down. April 10, it's Real Sports 10th Anniversary Special highlighting the best moments of some of sports television's most acclaimed journalistic stories. Take a look back at some of the biggest personalities, investigations, the stories that Real Sports has covered over the, over the course of its 10-year run as one of the most acclaimed series on TV. You're coming in low and you're coming out low. All right. They really smart in here. Keep turning this guy. There's no sense of banging. Punch to the body. Down goes Joe Vall. Bad call. Should have been a knockdown. Definitely should have been a knockdown. There was no foot involvement there at all. Oh, Tracy. How you go? You agree? He was out of balance. It, it, the punch landed on his shoulder, seemed like to me, and his balance. But that, you know, officially, if you can hey, hit with anything ooh. above the waist, and as a result, you go down. Even Eman the Emmanuel, it's a knockdown. Emmanuel, it's a knockdown. if he was off balance, whose fault is that? I didn't say it was fought with, but I said officially it's a knockdown if you get it with any blow above the waist and you go down as a result of that. So officially it is a knockdown. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> okay, Jim. 58-56, four rounds to two, Fernando Vargas. I disagree on that knockdown, Jim. When you when that the uh, painted Stop. canvas gets wet, it's very, very slippery. Four times Raymond Jovan's feet came apart. Four times he's you know, he virtually slipped down. 
I mean, it, it just wasn't a knockdown. His feet came apart, and he slipped, and that's all there was to it. Cole had the right call. We'll have to agree to disagree on that one, Harold, but I, ha I have it five rounds to one for Vargas. a fast straight right hand lead off the bat as he's moving in Fernando would have it be in big trouble if, jo if Joe Val could do that Emmanuel he wouldn't be Joe Val. no he wouldn't <laughs> be fighting him tonight they wouldn't allow him to fight him but all he's doing he's working throwing a lot of punches but they're not effective punches I'm not sure he could hurt Fernando even if he could throw that punch if he shot his straight right hand off the bat and squeezed the tight at the end he would get some respect I'll tell you that much. I'll take your word for it Seen a fight or two. There are probably many in this crowd who expected, given the business of the fight, probably many who expected to see Fernando dominating a far lesser fighter here. They're probably a little surprised. I'm surprised. I, I thought Fernando would have knocked him out earlier, but I'm not so much disappointed in Fernando. I think it's just Joe Barlas came in so focused and prepared and determined. I don't think they wanted to push over. I think they wanted to see if Fernando can fight. I'm not sure, I don't recall the record exactly that Joe Wall has ever been knocked out. He has three losses. And he's a bigger guy. Trading punches at close range and both guys giving uh, as good as they're getting. My producer informs me that he has never been knocked out. So while he's not a hard puncher, he does take a punch well. 10-round loss to Erlan Batari in France. 12-round loss to Antonio Perugino in Italy. And a 12-round loss to Sam Solomon in Temecula. And also the fact that Larry brought it over, he's much, much bigger physically. And that makes him able to absorb a punch right. a lot better. Hey, you all right, baby. Don't worry about none of that. All I need you to do is get on your jab and keep throwing them counters like you're doing. Keep your hands up tight. That's what you're going to catch it with everything. Don't you see what he's doing? Yeah. When you got your hands up and you're in the clinches yeah. like that, yeah. you're going to counter punch on one. And I want you to rip that shit when you do. Yeah. All right? Hands busy. Keep, keep moving working. that head. Keep moving that head. Come on, keep, come on. Don't stand up and stop that bolo shot. Come I don't come want that. I want to right from here. Big one. Big one. You hear me? And pop that jab. Big one. Big one. Big one. Big one. Big one. Big one. You're in shape, baby. There you go. Step around. Tip top. Hooks, You're in tip top shape, Ray. And use that jab. Come, Come on, get that out. Get it out. Get up. Get up. Remember, the fight is scheduled for 10 round, 10 rounds, not 12. So we go to the eighth round now. Not an empty empty seat in the house and there have been a few fights around the house as we've seen the crowd turning this way and that from time to time. Vargas with a left hook to the head of Joval and another picking his spots for the left hook. That's the right hand that I was telling you if he could do that effectively Vargas would have a rough rough night. Well what everybody remembers is not only was Vargas knocked down five times by Trinidad and by and once by De La Hoya, but a welterweight uh, Wilfredo Rivera also once knocked him down. There's a cut above the left eye of Raymond Joval. There is a, uh, a cut right above the left eyelid of Joval, and that's going to affect his vision. You'll see it when he turns around. Starting to drip from the cut. Seemingly has given Vargas a lot more confidence and maybe taken on detracted from the confidence of Javal. Yeah, Vargas is starting to yeah. step forward and yeah. dig to the body, and Javal is looking for room to get away. Yeah. The fight has changed because of the cut above the left eye of Javal. And the place.
placement of that cut tells me it's probably from a Vargas right hand. So that in itself is probably enough to build his confidence. It really, really bothers Joe Val. It's totally taken him totally out of his game plan. Perfect shot by Vargas with the right. And Vargas going for the kill, but going very deliberately and patiently. Absolutely. He's still being smart. Vargas picks the left hook to the body, slips the right hand. Workmanlike operation for Vargas. As he waits to see what will happen to Joe Val next. Gradually trying to deconstruct the taller, bigger Dutch fighter. Good body shot by Joval. Joval gets back to throwing now, apparently having gotten accustomed to the blood coming out of his eye. But now Vargas rips him with another right hand and a big left hook upstairs. He's not throwing any punches recklessly. He's every punch to be effective. The Dutchman has to put his finger in the dike to keep going. Well, if, if Vargas comes out and picks up where he left off, he should stop it in the next round. This is something. The cut is under control, all right? He's throwing. Right. 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 Miguel Diaz in Chaval's corner back, is a Ray. very you good cut man. You gotta let your hands go and step to the side. All right? You gotta work now, baby. You gotta work. Here Vargas landed a beautiful short left hook right up on the temple area. And now he's coming with a straight right hand right between the gloves. One thing you can say, Joe Bob must have a good chance, but Vargas will land some pretty good punches, and he's a pretty decent puncher himself. Hockey box numbers in eight. Vargas 43 out of 67, 64 percent, including 32 out of 48 power shots. Joe Bob's punch count dropped to 73, the lowest since the first round. Vargas needs to go right back to those right hands. They're working, so why stop? Keep shooting. Particularly since, if there's one thing we've seen for near certainty, Joval can't hurt Vargas with his left hand. His punch is the right hand. Vargas over and under. Joval's landing his right hand. He got in two big shots. But Vargas is still methodically targeting the spot above Joval's left eye. Vargas still is a little cautious. He doesn't want to take too many risks still, and uh, also maybe he's a little concerned about pacing himself. Yeah, who can blame him? You don't have to learn everything all at once, do you? Well, he's been in some brutal fights. Do you see any any sign of ring rust after such a layoff, Emmanuel? I do, I do. I, I, you know, I, I, I think it was wise for him to fight this caliber guy instead of saying, no, I want to get hold of Trinidad. I want to get right back and get with Oscar. I see a lot of us, and uh, a lot of things that are more accurate and harder puncher would take advantage of. Vargas gets hit in the cup, below the belt. A referee, Lawrence Cole, apparently didn't see it. Vargas in big trouble. Now fights his way back with a left-hand body shot, but Vargas for a moment was badly hurt by a low blow and wanted a break, while Cole never saw the low blow. It's a big low blow, too. And once again, you see the slippage of their shoes over there. And now you see Vargas' fighting instinct. He's recovered enough from the low blow to reassert himself, and he's going at Javal with combinations. Trying to knock the halo off his head. I may be wrong, but I just is my gamble that Vargas would just go all out. I think he could knock out. It's a gamble that he could get tired of get hurt. He's thinking but about I, it. But, but he's I thinking think, about yeah. it. He's worried his trainer would be upset at him for it. But the fighter is starting to come back to the surface of Vargas' character. A short overhand right, I think, would end this fight. If he could just let it go off the bat, but he's trying to fight a little too intelligent. Well, his promoters at main events would say to you, that's the kind of problem we like to have. Yeah, but I, I think at this point here right now, a short right, I, I, the, Javal is wide open for a short right hand. Uh, I mean, with all this power, if he turned one through, it would be over with. Now there's 
blood over both of DeVal's eyes. Both the left and the right eye are cut. And an unmarked Fernando Vargas continues to weather the storm. Hey. A big punch output from Raymond DeVal. In the fourth round of his fight with Felix Trinidad, Fernando Vargas had great momentum, knocked Trinidad down, appeared to have turned the fight around. When that happened, Trinidad threw a punch exactly like that, but, the punch that Jobal well, just threw. Well, that, that was, I think, definitely not on purpose. That was where he was going underneath a punch, and his head was just pushed down. But I think Trinidad was a little bit maybe more on the Oh, no, no, that was a calculation. Type. It was you know, calculated. That punch, was yeah. a calculation that night. This one may have been an accident, it accident. but it hit Vargas in the same place. And then, like, when you hit underneath the cup, that's when it really hurts. It lifts the cup up. Pop that jab, stay low, and get going. Get going, right? Three minutes. Three minutes. You can hear me too much shit. Keep your hands up. Boxing, turning. You take advantage of this. Hook right hand lead. Box numbers through the ninth round show Fernando Vargas selective landing more than half his punches. 224 out of 426. Raymond Zobal has thrown more than twice as many punches as Vargas. If there's a judge here who favors activity and activity alone, that person could have Zobal winning the fight. But if you're Harold Letterman, I'm sure you have Fernando Vargas in the lead. Don't you, Harold? <laughs> Absolutely, Jim. 87-84, six rounds to three, ferocious Fernando Vargas. You know, Jim, in the final analysis, at the end of a round, you got to say to yourself, who hurt the other guy more than the other guy hurt him? Jovell is the busier guy. Fernando is the harder puncher. He's doing more damage. 6-3, Vargas. If there's a judge that has Jovell ahead in this fight. He better get on his horse and get out of town fast. I and agree. The fight is over. I agree. Just don't think it's completely outside the realm of possibility, but in all likelihood, Vargas will get the benefit of the doubt for his more accurate punching. Because Joe Biden has been ineffective aggression when you look at actually the clean punches landing. interesting even when he throws his punch like he's very comfortable punching at the upper part of the cup of Vargas I that Vargas is left shoulder but he has More no power yeah. at all no he no power at all he doesn't even punch that much at the head and, and even if he did he, I don't think he would do as much damage because he doesn't punch that hard Vargas tried for that right hand shot but he was too far away Vargas either sat down and get his feet planted properly and then turn a short path for all right here not trying to do it while he's moving This is over. Vargas's trainer Danny Smith is going to say, "I'm glad he got 10 rounds of great work. He needed that." Whether it's true or not, you know the trick for the future for Vargas is to blend this kind of boxing with the sure instinct and intuition to go for it when it's there to let loose the fire that defined him at his peak. Well, it's been a much more competitive and exciting fight than I expected. I thought it would have been a knockout within three or four rounds. Instead, it's going to go the distance, and we'll find out what the three judges from here in Texas have thought of the efforts of both Vargas and Raymond Jobal. Crowd rises to applaud Fernando Vargas for coming back to boxing for coming to Corpus Christi and for giving the audience what it wanted. Time. Fernando Vargas told us yesterday that after performing in that movie with Bruce Willis and Sharon Stone, Dog. Alpha Dog, yep. He has had several more offers to do movies. I think Hollywood will have to wait a while. So he's getting more offers to be a movie star than Oscar De La Hoya. Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> I thought it was a solid performance. Showed uh, that he could make some modifications in how he fights. 
and surprisingly showed real good stamina, although I thought in the last couple of rounds, he played it very cautiously. Emmanuel, your thoughts? Well, before we go to that, let's take a look at who are the three judges who are going to be scoring the fight. We mentioned that Jesse Benavides himself, a former featherweight title holder, was managed by Emmanuel Stewart. It's his first notable fight as a judge. Go get him, Jesse. We're sure you're going to be really good. Ray Hawkins, 59 years old from Texas, had Julio Diaz, uh, the winner over, excuse me, Juan Diaz, the winner over Lakba Sim when we covered that fight in Houston last year. Juan Diaz, perpetual motion, whirling dervish of a lightweight fighting machine. Jesse Reyes, 43 from here in Texas. Uh, had Kermit Centron leading against Teddy Reed in Houston on that same card last year. And uh, Centron ultimately won a nervous knockout there. And uh, as the judges compile their scores and we get ready to hear the final decision now uh, you heard larry's capsule comment on what he thought of argus give us yours well i thought it was a good fight for him coming back it's someone that pushed him but it also showed the things that he has to work on also i think he's going to have to use his left jab more if he's going to be a boxer and not just try to just block punches and back away but it was a good fight for him coming back you know he's you know, a guy of a young kid and been with all those guys so powerful i quarte and trinidad uh at De La Hoya, a lot of hard fights for a young kid. And I mean, and, they, and he took a lot of physical punishment in those fights, too. Do you think that he was being rushed because his management and his promoter feared that his outside the life ring might swallow up his inside the life ring before he, re he reached his ultimate destiny as a fighter? I think it could have been a combination of that, plus the fact that he himself was such an aggressive type guy and his demand to fight the best. He was, he's not an easy guy to control. Michael Buffer has the decision. Let's hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Jesse Benavidez scores at 98 to 92. Ray Hawkins, 96, 94. And Jesse Reyes scores it 97, 93. All to the winner by unanimous decision, the Aztec warrior, El Feroz Ferocious. Fernando.